You've probably seen my episodes on my channel of my aluminum TIG welding. You've probably wondered, why the heck does this guy have a ball on the end of his tungsten? Most inverter type machines you will find these days recommend specifically that you use a pointed tungsten. So why am I breaking the rules and using a tungsten with a preparation that I'm not supposed to use? The first reason is this setting on my machine right here. Yep. The setting is going to be the balance setting. So many people hit me up online and they ask, what are the settings that you are using? More specifically, what are your balance settings? What do you set your balance up at? And to be honest, this is a pointless question to ask me in my opinion. For example, what if I am welding something thicker? Like a bunch of grumpy welding on some thicker pipe to some 3 16 plate like this. My balance setting that I'm gonna use on a project like this is gonna be so different than what you would probably set your machine at as far as welding on some practice coupons or something like that. So for example, somebody using a pointed or a blunted tungsten and setting their machine settings similar to what I might do for a project like that, they're gonna start up and flash up for their first weld and their tungsten's gonna be like, what the heck is going on? Ah! This is why if you finish a weld and you look at your electrode and you have all these strange shapes on it. Like I said, this can even happen with blunted tungsten electrodes. If your balance is not perfectly set to the preparation that you are using on a tungsten, or it's not absolutely fine tuned to the specific joint that you are about to weld, you are going to get some misshaping to the tungsten electrode that you're using. And sometimes even with something like a blunted tungsten, it can even get so bad as something like this. Yep, that's right. Now, this was the type of preparation that was recommended as well as what everybody tells you to use online these days. So following the exact rules that everybody said I should follow, we still get problems with the tungsten that is fluttering all over the place or misshaping. Now I'm gonna show you how to ball your tungsten in a second here, just hang on. But here is why I prefer using a tungsten with a ball preparation on the end of it for TIG welding aluminum. Now again, with all the recommendations I'm giving in this episode, this is my personal preference. If you do something different, that's absolutely cool. I have my own reasons for doing things the way that I'm describing here. You might have your own reasons for doing what you do. It's all good. That's how welding works. The reason that I do this is typically because I can get away with a little more leeway with my balance settings, as well as all the welding I will do across different joint configurations and different amperage I might be using, different material thicknesses. As long as I don't dip my tungsten, which does happen from time to time. This preparation on my electrode will never change. I can flash up and blast away on a heavy weld mitt like this. I can rip around some pipe fillets with great accuracy, and I can even get away with welding some pretty thin stuff with pulse as well. Yep, no matter what I am welding on, as long as I keep my tungsten clean, this preparation is going to last over and over and over and over. And again, this is barely even touching the balance setting on my machine. I'm basically gonna set this sucker up to somewhere around 75% negative, 25% cleaning, and I'm literally never going to change it or think about it. Now, if I was using a pointed tungsten and I was changing from welding something like this here, then back to something like this, then back to something like this again, I would have to really fine tune and adjust my balance every time. Whoops. Just realized I left my son's birthday present out here. It's his birthday tomorrow, he turns five. Dino nerf stuff for the win. So let's say you are all in, you are sold. How the heck do I ball my tungsten, Dusty? Please tell me. All right, my friend, let's do it. The first thing I'm going to do here is grind back a taper on my tungsten electrode. You can do this with a pedestal grinder, a belt sander, dare I say, even an angle grinder. <laughs> Just wear safety gear and make sure that your grinding surface is absolutely clean. Whatever you are using, only use it for tungsten preparation. Now, when I grind the taper back, I'm going to grind it so that the length of the taper is roughly two to three times the thickness of the tungsten. So for example, if you are using a 3 32nd of an inch or a 2.4 millimeter tungsten, so the length is going to be somewhere around 3 16th to 9 32nd of an inch or 4.8 to 7.2 millimeters long. I'm gonna leave a little flat spot on the end just like this here. And if it is clean and evenly ground, let's get balling. I'm gonna put it in my torch and I'm gonna set it with the stick out that I would prefer if I were welding. I'm gonna make sure that my gas is cycling properly. And then here's where we get balling. You can do this a few different ways. We'll go over a few of them here, but here's the first one. If you have a polarity selection switch like this here, set it to DC positive. This will direct all of your set current on the panel back up at the tungsten. When you initiate the arc with your foot pedal, go easy with this. Arc on very slowly. This will require very little amperage. You can look at the readout that I'm getting on my Everlast here to actually see how much I am using, literally nothing. 
When you're doing this, you're gonna watch it ball up slightly, and then you're gonna back off the pedal ultra slow, and you're gonna freeze it where you think you are happy with the size of ball that you see. You do not want it lopsided. Just remember to return your polarity switch to AC welding before you start doing any other welding. Bad things will happen if you forget to do this. Consider this my warning. If you do not have a polarity selection switch, do this instead. Flip your welding machine so that it is welding on DC negative polarity. This is the welding that we are gonna use for TIG welding stainless steel, mild steel, among others. Then with the machine and gas shut off completely so it's safe, swap your terminals so that the torch and ground leads are opposite to what you would have them set up for for regular DC negative welding. Now you have reversed the current direction, ball away. It's the same as the previous way we just did this. Go low and slow, lots of post flow, and you are good to go. But make sure, put your terminals back in the correct positions before you continue on with any other welding. But wait, I've even heard from some people and they complain that when they do this, the gas on the machine will stop working or the machine will fail to initiate an arc completely. So if that's the case for you, what do we do now? This is my least favorite way to do it, but we can definitely still get it done for you. Here we go. Keep your machine on AC welding polarity for aluminum. However, what we are gonna do now is we are gonna jack the balance all the way up to the positive side as high as it will go. You can see on my Everlast machine here, I am cranking this up. If you have a dial like this, you can see one side is penetration and one side is cleaning. You will turn this all the way to the cleaning side as high as it will go. Now again, ease on the pedal slowly. In some cases, you will typically have to use a little bit more amperage to do this, but as long as you are going slow and being patient while this is happening, as well as keeping a really close eye on what you are seeing, everything will be okay, just go slow. Again, with a little tiny end and a tapered tip, this is gonna happen pretty easily. And welcome to the club, you are now a baller. Now, look at this little cutie right here. Is this a huge frickin' giant ball on the end of my tungsten? No, it's about as tiny as somebody who would be using a blunted tungsten. We do not want a huge stupid ball like this here. This is gonna cause arc inaccuracy. It's gonna restrict smooth gas distribution. The ball we see here is tiny. We will still get the sharp accuracy that I would have if I was running a pointed tungsten, but we will absolutely not get any arc wandering. We will not compromise any of our gas flow. And you can see this ball is still absolutely tiny in relation to the overall thickness of my tungsten. People leave all kinds of comments yelling at me on my channel because I like to ball my tungsten. I'm not supposed to do that. But again, if I were to use the preparation that these comment Karens are yelling at me to use all the time, as well as what it says online and in the manuals to some of these machines, I can still even get results that look like this here. But even with the ball preparation on my tungsten that you see here, even after like 50 starts and welding at whatever amperage I want to within reason, when I'm finished, my tungsten is still going to look like this. Now, do I ever weld with a tungsten that is pointed? Sure, absolutely. Sometimes if I'm welding the same part over and over, there's literally no change in joint configuration, maybe something really thin or where the passes have to stay really narrow, I can absolutely use a pointed tungsten. In this case, I definitely would turn the positive side of my balance way down. This is gonna direct way less heat back up at the electrode. I will increase the frequency so I am welding at a higher hertz. This will help to narrow the arc cone quite a bit. So in this event, you can keep your tip much more pointier <laughs> and consistent for a longer amount of time. But regardless of what preparation you like using, all that I genuinely care about for my students or anybody that I train in person is just keep it clean for sake. If you dip, swap it out for a new one. It takes two seconds. If you start to see your tungsten fluttering or starting to misshape, redo the balance setting with whatever preparation you are using and try again. This tiny thing here is probably what makes the most difference with TIG welding aluminum results. We have zero tolerance for anything but perfect. Watch this episode next right here. It is a full workshop with how to get going with TIG welding aluminum, and it's one that I genuinely wish I had when I first started to TIG weld aluminum. Go watch this episode here right now.